education. She spent her life savings taking us to the best schools in Kenya up until high school. After that, we were on our own. Rahab over there was saying that we grew, we, we spent many years together, 30 years ago. That's because we were both flight attendants. My first job as a flight attendant in the skies. I was a waiter in the skies. That's how I got to see the world at the age of 19. And from there I got to, I got the opportunity to come to America and go to school. Ended up at New York University studying broadcast journalism and the rest, as they say, is history. That's how I worked my way. Many of you have similar stories. Many of you have gone through struggles, trials and tribulations. That's why I was saying earlier on, everyone in this room has a story to tell. Not just for your kids or their kids, but for other Kenyans to know that there were people like you who struggled to make it. They need to know. If they don't know, who's going to know? If you don't tell your story, who will? If you don't, it'll become his story. His story. And you'll be hearing things like, they discovered Mount Kenya and Mount Kilimanjaro. Like it wasn't there before they discovered it. <laughs> it was their story. History is always told from the point of view of the hunter, not the hunted. The lion can never tell a story, but we can, and we should, and we must. That's the most important thing. And the fact that this organization has been launched today, folks, this is a stepping stone. This is the next step. We want to make Kenya proud. We're all proud to be Kenyan. You can have three, four passports. That's fine. Passport is a piece of paper that makes you travel from point A to point B. My little son was born in South Africa, a proud little boy, eight years old. Every time Kenya is playing South Africa in the rugby, he says, Papa, I'm playing against you guys. <laughs> My son, I'm playing against you guys. He's so proud to be South African. But he knows he's also Kenyan. He knows he's also American. He knows he's a citizen of the world. That's what we are. Someone was talking about the Jews of Iran, Israelis. They love to be called Israelis. They're so proud of their country. And yet when you go to New York City or Chicago or wherever they are, and they're everywhere. They're so proud to be American. But it's Israel first. That's what we should be, folks. You guys are untainted. When you say one voice, that, that thing, yeah. When you say one guy for one voice, that's what we mean, folks. You haven't been tainted by that tribalism and negative ethnicity that you read about in the papers every day that's happening back home. You haven't been tainted, and you shouldn't be tainted, because that stuff is a cancer. This stuff will destroy us. You guys have to lead the way, because you have come across the pond, and you have seen what it's like on this side. You have to be that fuel, that energy that's going to change things. That six-month-old kid over there doesn't know anything about tribalism, has no clue. It's stored in the house. It's stored by us people. We wreck this place. Let's not wreck our country, folks. There's no other Kenya to go to. I once covered a country called Rwanda, right after the genocide in 1994. A million people slaughtered in the length of a hundred days. When you do the math on that, that means 10 1,000 people were killed every day. 10,000 slaughtered, pandas, machetes, guns, you name it. 10,000 a day or 100 days is a million people. 22 years later, Rwanda has risen up. It's an incredible country that done so well, led by that one man. One man can change it. Why do we want to destroy our country? Where are we going to go? Canada? <laughs> Where well, I understand the rejects are all being welcomed. <laughs> Where do we want to go? There's only one Kenya folks. One diaspora, one voice. You guys can make a difference. You guys must make that difference. On the other side, people will be shouting and yelling and politicking every day, all day. What are we going to do about moving the country forward? 
what are you going to do? Don't keep saying, oh, it's up to J uh, Jubilee, it's up to court, it's up to whoever. No. It's up to you guys. Everyone needs to be involved. All hands on deck. You can't stand on the side of the field and start giving instructions that you're not in the game. You've got to be part of the game. I'll end by saying this, folks. One of my favorite movies is a movie called Field of Dreams. I don't know if you've ever watched it. The old movie is about 20, 25 years old. Starring Kevin Costner and James Earl Jones and four of those actors. Great movie. It's about baseball, but it's also about life. And in that movie, a voice keeps coming in and out of the movie, out of the blue, you know, out of the skies. A voice keeps coming out saying, If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. These good folks here have built this organization. Kenya United Diaspora Organization. They have built it. It's up to you to come. It's up to you to make it what you want it to be. Nothing's gonna come like manna from heaven and make it happen, folks. If you build it, they will come. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.